I'll invite um, I'll invite Tamara to uh, for a conversation with uh, Joshua Igara talking about um, how is it that commercial banks or what is the role of commercial banks and how they're responding to the push to encourage green investment. Over to you, Tamara. Great. Thanks, James. Um, it's great to have uh, Joshua with us today. Uh, Joshua, thank you for joining us. I, I think that KCB has been a real uh, leader in the sustainability space, being one of the first private sector players to launch the sustainability, your sustainability report, which was mentioned earlier. Um, I, and uh, as Mark said, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to dig right in. I'd like to congratulate KCB again on achieving, um, becoming an accredited entity under the Green Climate Fund. And I'd love to hear from you. Why did KCB Group decide to go down that process, um, which is difficult? Um, Joshua? Thank you very much, uh, Tamara. Let me also use this time to appreciate uh, Dr. Julius Muya, who spoke earlier, uh, Her Excellency uh, Jen Marriott, the British High Commissioner, uh, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, who is on the call. Nick Nesbitt and colleagues who have spoken. But I'll just give you a small background on, on, on our own journey for sustainability as a bank. And this is more than a decade ago. Uh, and, and Nick Nesbitt mentioned around the private sector has been very much connected to really embodying and taking action for elements of impact on climate change. And so the rationale for us at that time was uh, threefold. You know, first to be recognized as a good corporate citizen in the markets that we operate in the region, being the largest bank here by asset base. And secondly, to enhance environmental and social governance in decision making. And thirdly, to tap into potential for green and climate related portfolio for businesses across the country and in the region. So, so we started that journey before. And therefore, this premise has been easy for us to decide for KCP to participate in the acquisition process due to what we see as potential and opportunity for green economy, uh, climate related uh, portfolios that are yet to be fully tapped into the market. And finally, to align ourselves with SDG 13 on climate action. So for us, our engagement with stakeholders, and particularly our shareholder investors, have always had a concern about running a sustainable business uh, that considers the priorities on environment, society, and governance around disclosures and reporting. Therefore, our objective seems to be aligned today, even from stakeholders, uh, with the expectations around environment and social governance mechanism in place to run our businesses. And therefore, it was easy for the journey for us to go for the accreditation, despite the process being difficult, we think it's the right way for us to go as a financial institution, Tamara. Oh, that's great. Joshua, how long did that process take? Well, let me say it's a long process. It's a journey. So it took us closer to three years to finalize, and we worked very closely with the National Treasury. Uh, and I would say that for us, you know, we've been on the Smith journey. You talked earlier, Tamara, about our sustainability reports, our assessment of a portfolio aligning with the you know, ESG principle we've done over the years, and I can speak about that next. But overall, I think it's been a, we, we today are the fifth financial institutions today to be accredited on, on, the, on the Agreement Climate Fund. Yeah, no, very, it's, it's very exciting. Now, as you know, we've, we've discussed in the past that the process was difficult, but it's worth it. But the real challenge is going to be finding bankable projects, bank, bankable green projects. So what do you think that the public and private sector can do perhaps together to really unlock the bankable green projects here in Kenya and across the region? Earlier, the PS spoke about the importance of private and public partnership, private and public financing working together and um, cooperating on doing this. So what ideas do you have for how that could be done? So I would say a lot has been happy. The leadership is a big part of the investment that we make and the change in the processes that we follow. So I, we worked very closely with Dr. Julius Moya, the PS of the National Treasury, uh, on this particular area in the last couple of years. And I will speak more specifically on the role of commercial banks, uh, because really, yes, I recognize that there is a complexity. And, and for me, the role of commercial banks is to be at the, at the nexus of conduits of green financing instruments increasing awareness of these facilities in the private sector, advising and to some extent engaging in capacity building to process green projects, support developers of this project, ensure their proposals are investment ready for, for being able to be considered and approved. And that complexity, uh, which in a way can be seen in two aspects, stringent standards, or what is seen as high cost of preparing project proposals, may be a barrier. But now that we've been accredited, we have got the knowledge and capability, I see this as a joint responsibility 
we, we, it's collective action for banks and their customers, which is what I think the industry will be able to take on as a financial sector. And this is a big opportunity for us as a leader. Now, at KCB, we believe that main avenues for raising awareness and training of our products and services committed to growing our green lending portfolio by at least 15% in the next two to three years is something that will make us achieve that milestones. And the government has also passed a number of climate change regulations on energy, on plastic ban, on waste management. And the National Treasury uh, is the National Designated Authority for the GCF. It's further responsible for writing a no objection letter for all proposals brought before it. So, and then the private sector and the government can work quite closely. I heard the uh, Dr. Jason mentioned about the work we can do at the national level. Uh, supporting Kenya's Vision 2030 in terms of projects, the Big Four Agenda and the SDGs, very aligned, working with the counties. And this can provide greater clarity on the county climate funds, uh, the energy investment plans, the private sector can provide a lot of activities to manage those projects. So I see a midwife portfolio for banks to be in the, in the forefront. That's why as a leading bank, I'm glad that we are here and we are accredited already to be able to support, provide new imagining area of, 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 of lending and perhaps new ways of much matching, much making between project developers and financiers for green development with minimum social and environmental impact in the communities. These are areas I believe that will unlock and easen the process. As we do a couple of projects we are looking at today, tomorrow, the process gets easier by day. So we learn by doing. That's great. And even before the GCF accreditation, you already had a green portfolio or at least a percentage. What percentage would you say of KCB's bank banking lending portfolio could be considered green now? And you mentioned you want to increase it by 15%. So it's good to know what, where, what base you're coming from. So, so we do an annual assessment in the last three years and we have published this information in our annual sustainability reports. The last year, 2018, we assessed our lending portfolio to look at a feel for potential green, it ranges between 15 and 18 percent for our current portfolio. So our ambition is to double it in the next two years, which I think is a good baseline for us, mainly in agriculture, real estate, mm -hmm. manufacturing, transport and clean energy. Now, we also do a very rigorous environmental and social due diligence with facilities every year. We normally do between 400 billion to 500 billion a year, which is a single large assessment. Last year, tomorrow, we were down because of COVID-19. Our assessment was shy of 100 billion shillings. And that review ensures that we then can deliver our ambition of uh, doubling it to 15% more in the next two to three years. Great. No, um, I think all of us would love to follow you on that journey. You mentioned that your shareholders and stakeholders were really supportive of this process and the sustainability objectives overall. But what resistance have you experienced or do you expect um, as you continue down this journey? So, so I, will, I will confirm that we do expect resistance. You know, it's, it's a matter of meeting our own ambitious targets on the sustainable development goals. And for us uh, as a key, you know, partner who was already in, in, in creating the UN principles of responsible banking for climate change targets, we see that people will get concerned. But our journey has been quite strong in the last decade. So I would say perhaps three barriers uh, for us. One is the lack of awareness. It's a complex process for us and the high cost of completing a qualifying project proposal for green loans, especially uh, for our credit agency like the GCF. So that's one area I will see that a bigger challenge for us. Internally, there are a lot of learning and building capabilities around our own organizations. So we are building that over time, we changed our process. We will train in excess of 3,000 of our full-time staff on this process, increasing awareness internally. So that's an internal match. And we run it through what I call sustainability champions in every division, in every branch, in every market that we operate. And perhaps more importantly is understanding the bank's emission profile. Because ultimately we have got our emission target reductions. We do have our decisive action to reduce them to manage costs and bring efficiencies and perhaps bring innovation and automation of services. So what banks must do today is to build sustainability to build their businesses, to safeguard the planet and future generations, our ambition is to align those objectives and action of a plan to support the decade of action in this space as part of our contribution to embrace inclusivity, manage climate with the risk, and work in partnership to realize these ambitions. And so we can drive that as a financial community, in not just in Kenya, but across the region, Tamara. No, that's great. And we've, we've already discussed COVID-19 a bit, but do you see COVID-19 as being a barrier to your sustainability goals or holding you back in any way? 
I mean, I would say that more than not, it is shown as the reason why we have to build resilient businesses. And perhaps COVID-19 shows the reason why sustainability is as critical for businesses than ever before. The new ways of working, and, and we spoke earlier uh, from uh, Dr. Muya around some challenges we've seen before. You know, locusts were a big problem a year ago, even before COVID-19 came. We had water shortages, we had challenges here in our regions. So what, what we have seen is perhaps, and I see a great opportunity uh, as a large financial institution to be able to start afresh. It is a mobilizing action, collective responsibility for us to have a single-minded agenda to be able to bid businesses that are, you know, perhaps for us is climate finance initiative to drive our level of portfolios that we have. And I think it's perhaps a huge opportunity we have. So I see something else I, I like to mention is even on areas like digital, where we spend a lot of time providing solutions for our customers, uh, accelerating the digital financial services, enabling payment platforms, which we didn't have before. What COVID has showed us is those opportunities have actually exploded. Today, we, we've seen you know, our, our transaction increasing by more than three, three times during this period because of the opportunities. So I, I will say to you that I, I see a chance for opportunity. I see difficulties, but in the recovery of building back better, I see a chance for a big opportunity in a couple of areas in our region. Absolutely. No, that makes a lot of sense. Well, we have a question from the audience. Let me read it to you. Are there any awareness raising programs by the bank to present to the private sector and even the counties the opportunities the bank is offering in the green finance space? Has the bank developed any guiding document to inform and guide the private sector involvement and the counties? So that's part of the work that we're doing now, you know, part of last year and this year. So that's a lot of the work to be done is about developing capabilities, providing awareness. We have a, a very strong internal team today, uh, which has been trained and certified across our whole divisions, both in our large businesses, uh, medium and small enterprises and startups. And we do look at different kinds of sectors and they are all different. So I want to give you some examples. In agriculture, we have a huge advisory team ready to be able to work at national level and county level. On off-grid solar and clean energy, which we see as a huge opportunity, uh, if you look at the statistics, we have a lot of activities, not just in Kenya, but in the region. Um, on green buildings, again, an area that specifically we see responsible for 28% of global energy-related CO2 emissions in 2019. A lot of opportunity for us to be able to go into there. And then finally, on solid waste management is an area where principles of circular economy can be applied. So if you start as those four will be key areas where we have specific capabilities and we work very closely. We happen to be the only institution that works closely with all the 47 counties here in Kenya. So rolling that out and working close with the national treasury, I believe that we are able, and we already have some projects today. We have proposals hmm. we are looking at. Even before accreditation, we did have close to six That's to seven great. proposals we are looking at today, tomorrow. That's great. Now get a head start on those because it, as you said, it does take time to get those through. Another question, would a green portfolio be considered less risky and therefore attract more attractive lending terms than a non-green portfolio? What's your perspective on that? So, so when, when you look at it today, I would say that uh, the answer for most projects is yes. We're looking at the different areas. Some of them like energy today, we see a lot of opportunity for them to have what uh, and actions for a competitive pricing for them from where we are. It contributes to the long-term ambition for the bank the way we have today. So that, that answer is yes. The, the bigger problem for me that I see or the challenges will be bringing together those projects and making sure that the, process, the accreditation actually happens and the documents are all brought together. That I sense will be one of the challenges we're going to overcome. We haven't seen in our own experience today that competitiveness or pricing has been a bigger challenge today for this kind of project. I think. It's the other way around. How do you get everyone aligned? How do you deal with the barriers that I spoke about earlier? How do you have more individuals focusing on converting and assessing their portfolio on this criteria that I mentioned earlier, doing the due diligence for, for an annually basis, and then dropping some sectors, which we are not actually doing any business with ourselves. And we do have an action plan at the industry. So at Kenya Bank Association level, right. we did set up a new initiative, Tamara, that you know, called the Sustainable Financial Initiative four years ago. And so we intend to drive this also across the sector, across all our 40 member banks in the coming year or so. So it's a good story to progress. 
Absolutely. Good. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your perspectives. It, as you mentioned earlier, there's a role for banks to play a midwifing process um, to help the, the whole sector move towards uh, more greening and the role of fi that finance can play. At FSD Kenya, we're, we're proud to be partnering with you and others in the sector to really look at how can we green the financial sector and how can we help the financial sector unlock financing for these green projects that you've been talking about? So thanks again for your time. And um, I'll turn it back over to James uh, to take us to the next session.